Hey guys, my name is Nick Murray. I'm a composer and producer. I do a lot of movie trailer music, and today I'm working on a brand new trailer track called Never Give Up by myself and Roger Shaw. And this is a big epic trailer track with massive strings, epic percussion, huge brass lines, pianos, synth parts, the whole nine yards. But I knew I wanted to add somewhat of an uh, emotional, realistic touch to the end of the cue with a beautiful female vocal kind of sitting over the top. Um, so I'm going to show you how to place a vocal like that in a track where you've got so much going on and where you want to hear all those different things, but still uh, have the vocal fit nicely. So we'll go ahead and play the track here first so you can hear what it sounds like, and then we'll dive into what types of plugins I'm using um, in order to make this all come together. Okay, so first things first, let's dive on in to look at what we were given from the vocalists. Her name is Tori Letzler, and she gave me an absolute amazing vocal to start with, which always helps. Um, she actually gave me two tracks, and I ended up picking Take 2 as my main vocal, and ended up using Take 1 as my backing vocals, and I'll show you how I process those a little bit later. So let's go ahead and turn all of our plugins off so you can hear what the vocal sounds like by itself first. Okay, so you can tell as the vocalist sings with more intensity or sings higher notes or something like that, the volume gets louder. Um, now, this is totally natural, but I want to be able to control that a little bit more. So I'm going to go ahead and pull up the Vocal Rider as my first plugin. And I'm not going to go into too much depth on how to use this plugin because I've already done a full uh, tutorial on that before. But basically, just like it looks, this is a single volume fader. And if I open up the automation, you'll see that it writes... Uh, volume automation to counteract with the increases and decreases of the natural volume of the vocal line. Now, you may think that's unnatural, and it might actually sound a little bit unnatural when we play it back here, but it's going to help us control this track a lot better. So let's go ahead and turn it on, and you can see how it's kind of smooths out the just the volume without adding any compression. <sighs> So you can see it's smoothing it out a little bit, and again, it's not adding any coloring or compression, so we get to do that later, but it's just helping us start the process so we don't have to manually take care of all those peaks and valleys by ourselves. Now, if we want, as you can see here on this part of the track, I did draw in some straight automation that I felt was getting a little bit too much uh, the way it wrote it, and it will still read what I've drawn in there. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and close that. Now, what you're going to want on processing vocals is basically five elements. The first, uh, and these can go in, you know, I guess any order you like, but uh, you're going to want EQ, compression, some reverb, some delay, and nowadays you're going to want some kind of uh, something to warm it up. Maybe some console emulation, um, some analog modeling, or some tape emulation, something to kind of take it out of that digital space that we all work in and give it some, well, warmth. Um, now, the really good place to start is the Butch Vig Vocals plugin, um, as this contains a lot of those elements already contained within one plugin. Um, these were all modeled after Butch Vig's favorite compressors, EQs, uh, et cetera, et cetera, and I trust his ears a lot more than I trust mine, so... Um, it's actually a really cool plugin. It doesn't just look amazing, which it does. Um, so I'm going to start off with this vocal by approaching the EQ. Now, 
Uh, the EQ section is kind of this top section here. And I'm going to start by just pulling up the low cut to almost 90 or so, just to be safe. And I felt that this vocal had quite a bit of high end, so I ended up pulling it down here. And you do this with your own vocal that you're working on uh, to the vocal. You want to listen to what you're working with. Don't just take kind of my plugin settings and add it to yours. Uh, so let's pull the compression down here first that, that I had on. It was at 64. I'll put it back on that later, and I'll turn this focus knob off. So we can just listen to the EQ for now. So um, it's kind of adding a little bit more presence to it. Um, I boosted the low just like looks like one and a half db and i've got this mid dip knob pulled up to around 440 um, that just helped with uh kind of taking out some of the roundness of that range um so and then again i rolled off some of the high end um let me pull the high end back up so you can hear what that sounds like with it all the way open and i'll pull it back down here at about 14 looks like uh -huh. So that's just taming it a little bit. Um, now let's go down here to this focus knob. I really like this. Um, when I put it here to this 1K setting, it actually fit this vocal I was working on just perfectly. Check out how it sounds here with this knob on. I'll turn it off a couple of times. It really makes it punch and brings it right to the forefront. <sighs> So that uh, sounds really nice. We're going to leave that right there. Um, the saturation, I actually didn't um, keep. I played around with it, but uh, it didn't quite fit to me on this one. And we're going to attack that later with a different plugin. So uh, basically, we've used the BVV to um, EQ, and, and we're, now we're going to add our compression. So let's go to the track here. I'm going to pump up the volume just so we can hear uh here it accentuated a little bit more and then i'll pull up our compression back to where we were and you can see when i pull in the compression how it's gonna not only smooth stuff out but kind of bring it all to the forefront for us uh -huh. and let me turn the track back on here we go So that's sounding really nice. I just want to uh, solo the compression real fast here. We'll put the volume back at zero of our plugin. And you can hear how this really just kind of put everything in its place. So to me, that's sounding really nice. And although you may say, but that's kind of destroying everything that the vocalist did, it's actually gonna gonna help a lot in the track. Um, so next up, to me, there's still quite a bit of high end on that vocal, and I just want to tame it a little bit. So I'm gonna pull up the Puig Tech EQ, and we can go ahead and close this guy. Now the Puig Tech, uh, I have attenuating around five, uh, the selection is at five and uh, again this is just going to kind of round it off and I'll toggle it on and off here you can hear what this sounds like <sighs> and let's hear it in the track So although it's kind of quieter, again, because I turned that volume back down, you can hear it's basically just taming it. It's not getting too intricate in like which frequencies we're adjusting, but it's kind of taking that idea that we did with the compressor, where we're just controlling it, but we're doing that with EQ now. And we're just touching it a little bit. Okay, now we're going to go to our kind of analog modeling. I'm going to go to my favorite plugin, uh, one of my favorite plugins, which is the NLS channel, and I'm using the Nevo setting. Um, and it's just pulled up a little bit. It looks like two and a half dB. And let's hear, this is just going to add a little bit of analog warmth to our signal. Uh -huh. 
and I'll solo it here. Now this one's subtle, and you can really crank the drive on this, but I didn't want to really go for like distortion. I just wanted to give it that little bit of warmth, um, and uh, you can play around with the different settings on this. This, this plugin works great on all sorts of different instrument channels. And now we're going to add a little bit of tape emulation, and I am by no means a tape expert. I didn't grow up in studios. I didn't intern at studios where I was working on tape machines back and forth, and I can't argue with you if this is as good as the one at Abbey Road or not, but I approach it as I do with any plugin. It looks like a great tool I can use, and so I'm going to go for it. So I went to the presets on this guy and ended up settling on the mastering fat, tight, and open, and I thought it sounded really nice on this vocal. So let's uh, listen to what this does to our signal chain. So to me that's sounding really nice already. So now we just need to put it in its space. Of course that bone dry vocal sounds really out of place. So for reverb, I've got set up here on our first um, our first send here in Logic, the brand new H reverb. And uh, I've gone through some of their uh, millions of plug or presets here, and I've settled on this Jim Ebden um, female tail verb. And I figured that'd be a good place to start with this female vocal we're working on. And I kind of wanted that tail to be present since we uh, want to sound, we want it to sound somewhat ethereal and angelic. And here's what it sounds like. So you can hear in those spaces, you can hear the reverb tail, but it doesn't sound washed out, and I like that. Um, it doesn't sound too much like we're in some enormous cathedral and you can't really tell what's going on. Um, it sounds really nice, and I really like these input and output echoes on this plugin. Um, it kind of adds a sense of delay without getting too much. It still sounds like it's in a room, I guess I should say. Um, here's what it sounds like by itself, just so you can hear it. So it's beautiful. It, it, it gives us what we want, and it's uh, not too much. Okay, now we're going to go with our delay, and um, I'm using the H delay, and I've got this on another send. Instead of putting it as an insert, um, because I wanted to be able to bring up the volume of the delay uh, manually here. So we've got the dry wet knob pulled all the way to wet, and I've got it set at, um, looks like half a bar, and the ping pong is on. Um, so here's what that sounds like. It's going to sound quite a bit when it's soloed here, but it actually fits nicely as we've dialed it up in the track. <laughs> One thing to remember about delay is delay helps you place stuff. Um, it works with reverb uh, in tracks. So delay, delay is a great way to place vocals if you're having trouble picking the right reverb. Okay, so now I want to go and just basically touch briefly on what I'm doing here on this backing vocals. This also was a mono vocal track. Um, I basically pulled over the same Butch Vig setting and the NLS, and the, you can see the volume automation from the vocal rider is is there as well, but this is what it sounds like by itself. Oh, yeah. So I've pulled up the real ADT, and this will give us a stereo version of this mono signal, and it works off of an LFO, so it adds slight variations in pitch to make it sound quite realistic. Um, I pulled up a preset called Vocal Rock Stereo, but then I've gone and adjusted the panning to all the way right and all the way left. And I will show you what this sounds like now. So 
So that's going to uh, put it to the edges while we've got our lead vocal right down the middle. Um, I just added a factory EQ just to kind of take down that uh, 200, 250 hertz range. And then I wanted to play with our spatialization. So I brought up our Shep 73, which is one of my favorite EQs because you can really hear what you're doing. I popped it in mid side mode here in the mode section and boosted the uh, high end frequencies at 12K and at 1.6. And uh, this is going to really just kind of boost that high end just on the sides. Oh, yeah. Hi, yeah. And that's going to sound really nice in the track here uh, and really give us that body we need when all the choirs come in and the strings and everything swells back in together and then add our delay and reverb back here. Take a listen to what this sounds like and I will mute it as well so you can hear what it sounds like without adding this uh, double backing vocal. All right, guys, that's pretty much it. Um, I hope this was helpful. Uh, please reach out to me on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, or on the street or wherever. Um, and thank you very much, and I'll see you guys next time.